Have you ever wanted to go to space? You might have, right? First of all, space does not have oxygen or molecular oxygen O2, which is two oxygen atoms together. Space has oxygen atoms separately and that also is not dense enough for any equipment to make use of it. On the other hand, space has vacuum pressure, which our human body is not capable to be in. To go to space and live safely, first off we need a rocket with fuel and pressurized capsule with life support systems and oxygen. Next, to have a good spacewalk, we need a huge suit or an EMU, extravehicular mobility unit which is pressurized suit and carries oxygen gas for a limited time. But now, what if your house which you stay in just teleports to space with all the equipment and oxygen, also providing place where you don't need that huge space suit to wear? Well, this is possible if you are ready to spend 150 billion dollars or if you are an astronaut. Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Today in this video, we are going to see about humanity and the greatest scientific and engineering marvels, the International Space Station. The International Space Station or the ISS is a testament to international collaboration, human perseverance and our insatiable curiosity to explore the cosmos. So today in this video, we are going to see about what is it, why it was built, who built it and how was it maintained. Let's start the video. The International Space Station or the ISS stands as a testament to global collaboration in space exploration involving space agencies from United States, Russia, Europe, Japan and Canada. The International Space Station was built to foster international collaboration in space exploration, facilitate scientific research in microgravity environment, test new technologies and provide insights into the effects of long duration space flight on human health. Fun fact. The ISS also serves as an educational tool, inspiring students in STEM fields and promotes positive international relations through shared endeavors in space exploration. One remarkable technological achievement born out of the ISS mission is Canadam 2, a robotic marvel designed by the Canadian Space Agency. This robotic arm, affectionately known as the Space Handyman, not only aids in the assembly and maintenance of the station, but also flexes its robotic muscles by handling cargo shipments. The Canadam 2 is a predecessor to the Dextry robot, often referred to as the ISS Robotic Handyman, which can perform delicate repairs and tasks in the harsh vacuum of space. Technological strides on the ISS aren't limited to robotics. They extend to life support systems crucial for sustaining human life on void of space. The ISS pioneers cutting-edge water purification system, ensuring that every drop is recycled and reused. This innovation not only facilitates long-duration space missions, but also serves as a beacon for sustainable resource management on Earth. Beyond its scientific and technological significances, the ISS captures the imaginations of students worldwide, acting as an educational tool that sparks interest in STEM fields. Early attempts. Before the construction of the International Space Station ISS, various nations embarked on ambitious endeavors to establish space stations, marking crucial milestones in the exploration of outer space. The Soviet Union played a pioneering role with its SALUT program, launching the world's first space station, SALUT 1, in 1971. Unfortunately, technical issues led to an unoccupied mission. Subsequent stations, including SALUT 2 and SALUT 3, faced challenges and SALUT 2 lost control and re-entered Earth's atmosphere. However, SALUT 6 and 7 in the late 1970s proved more successful as enduring space habitats, hosting missions lasting from 40 to 237 days. In the United States, Skylab launched in 1973 served as the country's inaugural space station, hosting three astronaut crews. Skylab 2's mission lasted 28 days 
Scala 3's mission lasted 59 days, Scala 4's mission 84 days. Unfortunately, Skylab's mission was cut short due to delays in space shuttle program, leading to its re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere in 1979. Before the ISS, the United States envisioned the Space Shuttle Freedom Project, which encountered design changes, funding debates and delays. This concept evolved into the collaborative international effort that culminated the ISS. Meanwhile, the Soviet Union's MIR-2 project intended as a successor to MIR space station in the 1980s faced economic challenges and the end of Cold War. Consequently, the MIR-2 project was scaled back and its planned models for new purposes within the Russian segment of the ISS. These early attempts and proposals lay the groundwork for the collaborative efforts that eventually resulted in the establishment and continuous operation of the International Space Station. Where is the ISS? The ISS orbits at an altitude of about 370 to 460 km, 200 to 250 nautical miles. Its altitude is not constant as it experiences a gradual decrease over time due to atmospheric friction. To counter this, periodic rocket firings are conducted to boost the station's orbit and prevent it from descending too close to Earth. Fun fact Did you know that the ISS travels at a mind boggling speed of about 28,000 km per hour, about 17,000 miles per hour? This high speed motion allows astronauts aboard the ISS to experience multiple sunrises and sets in 24 hour period. The ISS orbits within the thermosphere, the second highest layer of Earth's atmosphere. The thermosphere extends from approximately 85 km to 600 km. Or 53 miles to 373 miles above the Earth's surface. At this altitude, the ISS encounters extremely low air density, contributing to the station's minimal atmospheric drag. The ISS has an orbital inclination of 51.6 degrees which means its orbit is inclined at an angle of about 51.6 degrees related to the equator. This inclination allows the ISS to cover a significant portion of the Earth's inhabited regions during its orbits. In fact, the ISIS can fly over more than 90% of the populated areas on Earth, providing opportunities for diverse observations and experiments as it traverses different latitudes. Fun Fact With approximately 15.5 orbits completed per day, Astronauts aboard the ISS witness a stunning spectacle of 15 sunrises and 15 sunsets daily. Imagine experiencing the beauty of dawn and dusk multiple times in 24 hour period. The ISS exact location changes constantly as it travels at a high speed around the Earth because of its orbital velocity and the rotation of the Earth. The ISS provides extensive coverage of different parts of the globe during its orbits. Fun fact, living aboard the ISS comes with a unique daily routine including a day that lasts around 90 minutes. That's the time it takes for the space station to complete one orbit around the Earth. Astronauts experience about 16 sunrises and sunsets during this time, making their concept of daily and night quite different from life on the surface. Who is involved in the ISS project? The International Space Station ISS, is a collaborative project 
involving several countries and space agencies. The primary contributors are NASA, United States, Roscosmos, Russia, the European Space Agency, ESA, JAXA, Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, and Canadian Space Agency, CSA. These organizations work together to provide modules, components, and resources for the ISS. ESA comprises of member countries such as Germany, France, Italy, Spain, Netherlands, Belgium, Switzerland, Sweden and Norway plays a vital role in collective efforts. The station serves as a symbol of international cooperation in space exploration, with each partner contributing to crewed missions, research activities and operational responsibilities. How is the ISS maintained? Astronaut maintenance activities Spacewalks Extravehicular activities EVAs Astronauts conduct spacewalk to perform repairs, replace equipment and install upgrades. They use specially designed tools and wear spacesuit to protect themselves from the vacuum of space. The routine inspections. Astronauts regularly inspect the exterior of the ISS during spacewalks to identify and address any signs of wear damage and anomalies. Interior Maintenance Inside the station, crew members troubleshoot and fix issues with various systems including life support, communication and scientific equipment. Ground Control Operations Remote Diagnostics Ground Control team monitors the health of the ISS systems remotely. They can diagnose issues, provide instruction to the crew for troubleshooting and make decisions regarding their need for repairs. The ISS onboard computer system receive regular software updates to improve performance, fix bugs and enhance security. Unmanned cargo spacecraft such as SpaceX Dragon, Northrop Grumman Cygnus and previously the European Space Agency's automated transfer vehicle ATV and the Russian Progress spacecraft deliver supplies, spare parts and new equipment to the ISS. Replacement Parts Resupply missions often carry replacement parts for critical systems. These parts are installed by the crew during their stay on the ISS. Regular Checkups Scheduled Maintenance The ISS has a schedule for routine maintenance tasks including equipment checkups, 
system inspections and calibration of scientific instruments preventive measures to avoid potential issues crew members on ground control teams work together to identify and address any developing problems before they become critical emergency response in the event of emergencies or unexpected malfunctions the crew and ground control teams collaborate to respond quickly and effectively to address the situation maintenance of the iss is complex and collaborative effort involving international cooperation between space agencies and astronauts on the station regular communication and coordination between ground control and the crew in space are essential into keeping the iss operational and resulting and ensuring the safety of its inhabitants in case of dangerous situations such as fuel exhaustion where the orbit of the iss cannot be corrected if it lowers or any other critical situations the crew can use the swoi spacecraft that's always docked to the station as an emergency exit vehicle the swoi spacecraft as soon as the astronauts enter gets undocked and re-enters atmosphere after executing the required burns hope this video was interesting we'll meet you in the next video with another interesting topic take care bye